Two, uh, the two key contestants for the influential position of uh, DA federal chairperson are the incumbent Athol Trollip, mayor of the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, and the Tswan mayor Soilim Simanga. And for more, uh, let's cross back to our SAPC uh, senior political reporter Aldrin Sampia. Very good morning to you again, Aldrin. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, um, I do understand that uh, more than 50 resolutions will be debated, the key of which is the creation of uh, employment for young people. Take us through the rest of the program. Well, yes, we're still coming live to you from um, here in Pretoria, where the DA's uh, Federal Congress will be taking place over the next two days. It starts in about um, just probably just uh, over two hours from now that we'll hear the um, leader of the DA who will deliver his opening remarks. And then, of course, they'll break into the various um, commissions, commissions that will, char that, will char that, will, that will discuss various issues. But um, first of all, let's speak about the delegation that will be coming here, about uh, 2,000. Um, members of the DA will be part of the delegation as indicated earlier on from the executive director of communications of the DA who's indicated that this is the largest um, federal congress that the party has ever had. The numbers has um, nearly doubled since the last congress has taken place and quite interestingly is seeing that uh, the numbers coming from um, Gauteng has also increased uh, quite drastically and right now I'm joined by the DA's uh, provincial um, chairperson here in Gauteng. John Moody joins me now quite quickly let's speak about um, how you've been able to increase the numbers I see that according to um, the delegates that are coming here um, Gauteng has the highest number of councillors that will be part um, of um, the, the part of the the, 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 the Congress that will be taking place but the second largest when it comes to branches well you know that shows the um, our increase in, our, in size and also support base um, after the 2016 local government elections and the formula works in terms of the, the number of public representatives that you have in your province and then of course the number of active branches as well that you have in your province. Um, when it comes to public representatives we are also you know the second biggest. Um, you have more municipalities in the Western Cape and as a result thereof you actually have a few more councillors and your non-public representatives is also calculated according to the number of councillors that you have. So the formula is quite um, a, a complicated one. But um, I can assure you that after these elections, when we go to the, the 2019 elections, going towards uh, the, the, the next Congress to, you know, before 2021, um, our goal is to have Gauteng to be the biggest province in terms of representation even at our Congresses. There have obviously been a lot of criticism, even within the party, about um, the current formula that you use in um, getting um, delegates to come to the Congress, that why should it only be based on, for instance, looking at um, the voter turnout in terms of the support that the party has received in a particular, in a particular ward? Why not also look at um, how large these branches are, that you might have support, for instance, in an informal settlement called um, Winnie Mandela informal settlement, but um, you may not um, have um, the, the voter turnout? Well, look, that is an unfortunate one, and I think it was an oversight from us all, not realizing the implications and the knock-on effect as a result of our extra, extraordinary growth, you know, uh, since the 2014 elections, 2016 elections. Um, and at this late in the, in the day, for us to be able to try and change it would have just caused a lot of mayhem and would have put, actually put the results of this Congress into, into jeopardy. We are fully aware of, 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 of the situation and we have started addressing it already yesterday at our Federal Council meeting. And uh, we will be looking at, uh, you know, how do we accommodate every branch? We have over 4,000 branches within the country, uh, something that we've never had before. And active branches, we've moved away from membership because membership farming is fairly easy because we are an outcomes-based organization. Hence, we're looking at how many votes have you brought in. But it is very clear to us now, too, that uh, we need to look at uh, voting patterns and we need to ensure that um, every branch or every uh, constituency 
may be. We should rather look at every constituency should have a percentage of representation, perhaps based on the number of votes that you brought in. So there's different formulas that, uh, or that, we, that we could use moving forward, but we, we definitely have to address this matter. The leader of the party has indicated to me in an interview that um, what he doesn't want is to have a, a formula that's quite similar to the ANC's and where he says members of members, but he wants to make sure that these are people who actually want to be part of the DA, want to contribute, or contribute to the party. Do you think that the Congress should then discuss this and adopt a formula? Well, look, um, those are policy issues and so on that, um, and regulations. Those are dealt with with the next uh, uh, important body, uh, decision-making body, which is Federal Council. But we have uh, realized um, that, you know, we've been remiss on this particular one. Um, but I agree with him wholeheartedly. We don't just want people who are here because they are promoting the interests of an individual. We want to ensure that our membership is, and, and our activism is about wanting to change South Africa for, better, for the better. Because ultimately, as the provincial leader in Gauteng, my objective is not just for me as John to occupy a position of power in the party. It is my responsibility and duty to ensure that I grow the organization, and not just in numbers, uh, but in terms of the number of support that we have out there. And that, of course, is based upon getting people actively involved and interested in uh, getting involved with the, in our campaigns because ultimately it's our activists and our volunteers that are the multipliers out there. You, of course, um, you're a leader of the party in the province, you're a black man, and um, you are a, an opponent of this um, introduction of a possible diversity clause. Why don't you think the party needs that? When some may argue that um, if you look at the makeup of um, the, 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 your parliamentary deployment as it stands at the moment, you have more white people, even though it seems as though that the membership of the party is becoming increasingly more black. Well, let me firstly correct a, a mis misinformation. I actually supported the, the diversity clause. Uh, the diversity clause speaks about reaffirming what we already stand for. We had a campaign that we ran up to the 2016 elections, known as the R2D2, which is the redress, uh, and diversity is part of it in delivery. Okay? And um, because I've championed it as well, we, we understand the, the, the historical um, past that we have and the injustices there are. And therefore, uh, you know, diversity is, of course, something that we have continued to work on. What I was against is what came out in the newspapers and the media talk about quotas. And nowhere in that, in, in that particular clause does it talk about quotas. Because I'd be dead against quotas because it'll be bean counting. And I'd like to ensure that every black person who joins the Democratic Alliance and becomes a public representative is there because they are fit for purpose and not just to tick a box and to fill a quota. But if you're looking at Parliament, as you correctly indicated now, uh, the face of it in the front is, is fairly white. But come to my legislature, for example, and see the difference over there. Also, we need to look at the exponential growth that we've had since 2014. And I believe that through our selection processes this time around, we, we will definitely see a change in, in the color uh, moving in, into the National Assembly as well as in our legislatures across the country. And that comes from natural growth because we've become attractive to people of color. To so, sorry, j j just quickly before I let you go. Of course, um, there's been an increasing number of black people who joined the party, but in the absence of having quotas, how do you ensure that you change the face on the image of the party? Where, for instance, if you look at the Eteguini, um, the Eteguini caucus, um, there was a lot, of, um, a, lot of, a, a lot of criticism that the Eteguini caucus is all white, except for one Indian. Look, the thing is that, you know, you're talking about Eteguini, we need to look at demographics as well. I can assure you that I am already talking to people high caliber individuals who I know has an interest, a keen interest in making South Africa succeed. And they are interested in the democratic alliance. It is my responsibility as a leader to make them understand and feel comfortable to have a political home in, in, in the democratic alliance and also to avail themselves to be of service to our country. Politics is not an easy job. Stepping up into the, into the public domain is a difficult one. But there are some people that just need that encouragement for them to come on board. And I can tell you here now that the number of black uh, individuals 
highly recognized individuals in this country are now prepared to step up to the plate and make a difference and Herman Mashaba is one of those. Well, thank you so much. There you have it from uh, John Moody, who is the provincial chairperson of the party here in uh, Gauteng. We'll continue with our coverage of the DA's Federal Congress as it starts in um, just over an hour from now. And then uh, we'll also be speaking to the newly elected, um, newly elected leader of um, the DA's um, Women's Network, uh, Noma French Mbombo. We'll be speaking to her a bit later on. Let's quickly go to an ad break. I feel it's a real prison. <laughs> and it's nutritious and delicious. It's good, I really like it. This celebrates being South African. We love our beer, we love our food, we love our music. So for, for knowing who are going, you must know where you come from. For all your travel trends, catch us every Sunday, 12 midday on Channel 404. We were shooting um, a campaign. We're telling genuine stories from real people that have been affected by the SAPC. It's also interesting to get the backstory in terms of their dreams to be on screen and eventually getting the pleasure to do that. And understanding that they're communicating on a platform that speaks to millions of people. And it speaks to how the SABC can fulfill its mandate. The SABC represents the opportunity for so many young South Africans, for old South Africans, to be able to look at the world that they may not experience any other way. People should continue to pay the